Uh, so breast microcalcifications are nothing but calcific deposits which are seen in parts of the breast tissue. Now, it may be an early sign of breast cancer and it al almost constitutes 30 to 50 percent of non palpable breast cancer. Now, it ranges from being very easy to see as, you know, it just pops out for you or something that is really extremely difficult. So now, which is the modality of choice without uh, you know, any doubt, it is best seen on mammography. And for seeing that, we have to evaluate it with what is called as a magnification view. Now, what we do in a magnification view is basically bring the calcifications closer to the X-ray source so that they are magnified. And what it does for us is it makes their, uh, you know, the boundaries or the visualization of the microcalcifications that much more crisper so that we are basically better uh, equipped to talk about the morphology of these calcifications. And therefore, magnification view is definitely what is needed to see these by breast microcalcifications. And it is 100 times better than a digital zoom. So how are we going to assess the breast calcifications in the following manner? Uh, we are going to basically, you know, kind of concentrate upon two things, the distribution or and the morphology. Also, whether it, what is the stability of these calcifications, whether they are new calcifications, and whether there are other factors that are going to kind of, you know, uh, weigh in on our decision making as to whether, what is the age of this patient, what is the risk factor, and whether there is, you know, these calcifications which are associated associated with a newly diagnosed cancer in the breast, right? Now, what I mean by location is that can you, can you decipher where these calcifications are located within the TDLU, right? Sometimes it is easy, sometimes it is difficult. But if you are able to make out, then it makes your life that much simpler. So you have to remember that acinar calcifications are round, they are punctate, they look like peas in a pod, and they also sometimes when there is, uh, you know, they're not densely calcified, can also see, be seen to layer. Whereas the ductal calcifications are going to be rod-like, slightly irregular calcifications. So this is just, uh, you know, like a basic thing to kind of help you. But what really matters is figuring out and uh, putting down what is the distribution of these calcifications. Now, this is basically a... Uh, I will just go through what is meant by diffuse. Diffuse means these calcifications are randomly scattered in the breast without any particular or a focal or particular distribution pattern, right? Now, when these calcifications are about at least minimum of five and they're totally, you know, closed by and uh, I don't want to use the word because it's no longer used, but clustered together. So then they are called as grouped calcification and they have to be in an area which is lesser than one centimeter. Now, more calcifications in one region, which is actually, you know, uh, occupying at least a larger area greater than two centimeters or a quadrant of the breast makes these regional calcifications, right? Now, Linear calcifications are those calcifications which are in a line-like manner and segmental are those which are located along a lobe, right? So they are triangular in fashion with the apex of the triangle pointing towards the nipple. So obviously the diffuse ones are usually benign. Regional and grouped, we need to weigh in on the morphology. Linear and segmental are usually suspicious calcifications, right? I just talked about that. Now, coming to morphology, uh, what are the morphological, uh, you know, de uh, descriptors of these breast microcalcifications? You have calcifications that are typically benign. Um, we're going to quickly run through them. But I want you to pay attention to all these further descriptors, right? We will take them one by one. When they're round, punctate, cause heterogeneous or amorphous, we need to kind of weigh in on the, uh, you know, the uh, distribution pattern to kind of come to our final conclusion. And of course, when these calcifications are fine pleomorphic or fine linear branching, then my suspicion levels, I mean, alarm bells are already ringing. And, you know, whatever is the other thing, I'm going to be going ahead and biopsying them, right? Uh, just a quick word about mimics. So we very commonly, uh, deodorants, powders, ointments, which are, you know, put by patients. Uh, that's why we always tell patients that please do not use any of these. But the simplest way is, uh, you know, to kind of clean off that breast and repeat that view. Uh, so to as to make sure that these are just mimics and not true breast calcifications. 
So now let's run through what are the benign calcifications. You look at them, they look benign, and you leave them aside. You do not do anything about these calcifications. So which are these? You have calcifications which are on the skin, and these are typically these polygonal calcifications with a loosened center, and they will be location located in those particular areas which are very common, uh, you know, along the cleavage, in the intramammary folds, or in, in the axilla. Right. And uh, very rarely now we need to do tangential views. Uh, you may uh, see them or pick them up on the DBT slices. Vascular calcifications, we know they can be a problem only if they're all along one wall of the vessel. But you trace them along the vessel and you're clear. Coarse or popcorn like calcifications, you actually see the uh, associated density. And then, then, you know, like they kind of coalesce and form that one big chunk of uh, this large popcorn-like calcifications. This is very pathognomonic of a degenerating fibroadenoma. Now, these are calcifications which are, uh, you know, within the ducts or periductal in location. And these are needle-like calcifications. These are calcifications of plasma cell mastitis, and they are usually bilateral. Now, these are rim calcifications of fat necrosis and also seen as, you know, uh, in the uh, kind of... Uh, the surgical bed or the irradiated breast, that is where you will see these dystrophic calcifications. They can be huge, they can be hard, they can be palpable. And we have to just know that these are nothing but dystrophic calcifications and nothing needs to be done about them. We don't see these really now, but these are sutural calcifications and coming to milk of calcium. Now, these are those calcifications which develop, which is actually not calcified, calcified, but it's just, you know, a, a, what would I say, liquid form of the calcium. And the thing is that because it is in the asini, uh, when you change the shape or, and it's not solid yet, when you change the shape uh, or when you change the uh, projection in which you're taking the uh, mammogram, these calcifications change shape, right? So you have on CC, they appear as round or powdery calcifications while they they layer along the, uh, you know, the asini and they look like these linear or teacup-like calcifications on the ML or the MLO view. Now, coming to the morphology where I want you to pay attention now, you have calcifications which are round calcification. Now, these calcifications look like little dots, and when they are less than 0.5 millimeter in size, we call them as punctate calcifications. Now, these are calcifications which, uh, you know, are usually in a, they're multiple, they look like peas in a pod, and the commonest cause of these sound calcifications is focal fibrocystic change. So, they're typically benign, not always. Let's look at them, right? How do we manage round calcifications? For that, I want you to remember, we manage them like how we manage a fibroadenoma. Or you have an oval circumscribed mass. You are going to use, of course, the morphology, the distribution of the calcifications, and see if you can have any comparison with any old films. So when these calcifications are diffuse, or they're scattered, or regional, we give them a biorides too. Now, if they are the calcification that you see on the first baseline mammogram, and they're grouped, we call them a virats 3. Now, if they are segmental or linear, we don't care what the morphology is. We are going to biopsy them. If they're new or increasing and grouped, we are going to be biopsying these calcifications, right? So this is how you will remember how you will manage round calcifications. Now, coming to the sus suspicious morphology, let's look at each one by itself. You have coarse heterogeneous calcifications. These have a positive predictive value of almost 15%, right? These are irregular conspicuous calcifications, which are uh, about 0.5 to 1 millimeters in size. The commonest differential is fibroadenoma. And does stability yes, help? Yes, 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 very much. Okay. So old films are very helpful. Now, if these calcifications are defined and they're changing very slowly over time, like, you know, as we follow the progression of uh, degeneration of a fibroadenoma, we call them pirates too. But if they're new, increasing, or in our favorite segmental or linear distribution, we are going to be biopsying these, right? Now, amorphous calcifications have a positive predictive value of slightly higher, and these are straight away by rats 4B. Now, these are fuzzy. What are these amorphous calcifications? So you just remember that you cannot see the margin of these calcifications. They're very fuzzy, powdery, and you cannot make out each calcification distinctly. And they can sometimes be because of low-grade 
uh, DCIS besides the other differentials. And here, therefore, stability does not help us much. Now, if these are bilateral grouped and or diffusely, uh, you know, distributed calcifications, they can be classified as birads too. But if they are grouped segmental or regional, we will be going ahead and biopsying these, right? Now, let's come to fine pleomorphic, which has a positive predictive value of greater than 30% and therefore again becomes a Birads 4b. Now, this is slightly more conspicuous than the amorphous, slightly smaller than the coarse heterogeneous, and they have variable shapes and sizes. That is what you mean by pleomorphism, dots and dashes, right? And the first and foremost diagnosis that we want to exclude when we see fine pleomorphic microcalcifications is DCIS of high grade, but it can also be seen with fibroadenomas, papillomas, and other conditions. So your management will always be a biopsy. Now, you can have fine linear branching calcifications. These are calcifications which are thin irregular, but these are in a ductal distribution. And again, when their positive predictive value is 70%, and this straight away goes to Birads 4B, 4C, and therefore there is no doubt in our mind that we are going to go ahead and biopsy these calcifications. <laughs>